Good morning everybody, it's Aid here from Dale Skidmore Second Hand Tyres with part 8 of the boat restoration and this morning I've cut the ends of the uh, bin whales to uh, fit against the backrest and put them into the inside of the hull along the shear and it's thrown up a little wrinkle that I hadn't counted on when I bent the um, wood in the first place and that is that because I did it on the outside which is the only way you can really do it I uh, forgot about the fact that the radius was going to be different because what the uh, the outside of the boat is now the inside of the in whale and I needed the radius be the inside of the inwell against the outside of the boat so if that makes any sense but obviously it means that the curve is different so I had a little bit of a scratch of my head uh, and I've come up with the idea originally I was thinking about maybe making a former out of a piece of 4 by 2 with some blocks of wood on it and steaming and bending the wood on that but now after a little bit of reflection, I think what I'm going to do is bend the outwales around and secure them and let them cool down and then steam just a short end of each of the in whales and then clamp them in whilst they're, um, whilst they're soft enough to bend against the outside. And I think that will probably be the easiest way of doing the uh, job. If it isn't, then I should go to the other option of making a former and bending the sides off the boat to match this curve. But basically, that radius needs to be on there. And obviously, this is a longer path at the moment because it was bent around that way. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm pretty sure that's the way to go. just had Jimmy up with me and together we were able to fit the steaming hot uh, in whale in to the uh, inside of the shear and it's formed nicely against the, the side of the hull using the out whale as a brace for it and a, and a mould so uh, that seems to have gone quite well. I couldn't have done it without his help really because I needed to take the bag off and undo the clamps from the back end towards the centre and then uh, offer in the in whale and clamp up from the back end and move up and remove the front end clamps and then push it into place and then guide it into place finally with the wedges and clamps and the uh, G cramp at the end. I put a brace across from the garage door to stop the out whale from springing too much at the front end and that worked the trailer stayed where it was the boat never toppled it never toppled sideways um, so it went swimmingly so hopefully it'll be around for when I do the uh, port side because I don't think it's a job I could have done on my own because there's too much involved one way or another and a great long length of uh, wood and all the clamping and unclamping 
So uh, thanks to Jimmy for that. Didn't film it because I was quite nervous about doing it again because uh, it's sort of like the theory was there in my head but I wasn't sure whether it was going to work or not and um, the last thing really I wanted to do was start buggering around on film. So that's, uh, that's a wrap for that side for today. Let it uh, cool down and dry out. It's already gone cool. It doesn't take long. And it's been steaming for a good hour and a half. I've sort of got it down to that time. The first time I did it, I'd give it two hours. And then uh, I've sort of gradually reduced the time. And I think an hour and a half is plenty for it. it probably even could have done it in about an hour. They say it's a the steam will penetrate an inch per hour. That's the thickness of the wood rather than any you know length or anything. So if it's an inch thick, it takes an hour for it to go in. So uh, I'm pleased with the way it's gone. It looks good. Well, that's the port out way along. Now I've got a get ready in a minute to steam the in whale again to get it round that final bend at the prow. Right, I'm boiling up the uh, end of the in whale, ready to put it into place again and re-bend it. Uh, Jim is here to help me again but I doubt we'll ever film it because uh, we've well, seen it all anyway, it's just a lot of banging around. But whilst that's been going. I've been looking at uh, the fact that there's a lot of load going to be on these uh, from the Rollocks and I've got some offcuts of oak from the seat and I thought if I split them down and cut them out I can use them as reinforcing plates on the in and outside of the rails where the Rollocks go and bolt through rather than screw into the wood to give a nice firm anchor and um, I thought might as well do them a little bit fancy so um, I've come up with a design it's just a trefoil shape I made the template up and I've drawn it out onto the wood once I split it and planed it so this is going to be the insides and uh, cut it out and then uh, nail it to the rails with the copper nails and possibly glue it as well but it's going to have uh, two bolts going through it from the, from the rollock bracket and they're going to go right away through everything so these will act as a nice hardwood reinforcing for the um, the, the top rails and take some of the load away off the oars as well hopefully I don't think they'll I think the, the load will spread out really well across all that area but it's going to be for the time being until I've done it once at least and uh, changed my mind it's going to be the main source of propulsion for the boat anyway and I think I may have said before in a previous episode if I'm going out camping the last thing I want is a couple of gallons of petrol in the boat with me because I'll um, it will be such a fire risk and I don't fancy sleeping with it in the boat anyway so fingers crossed I can ride with the tide and uh, have a nice leisurely row I won't be uh, won't be too far wrong with that I'm sure there we go that's the inwell fitted after being re-steamed at that far end there and uh, they cool down ever too quick so you've got to really work fast but uh, now when it comes to uh, fixing them in permanent with the nails you clamp them up as you go and then drill holes and nail through and put the roves on and uh, so it'll all go together nice and I'm going to leave that now for today 
I've finished cutting out the uh, rollet plates as they were they called. Oops. So um, when I decide where I'm going to put them, they'll be uh, possibly glued, but certainly nailed through as well as bolted through with the rollocks. I did say previously that the um, the rollocks were in the wrong place. They were actually right next to the thwart, and the secondary pair of rollocks were sort of more or less in the place where they should be. They were between that clamp there and the actual corner of the seat that you can see. They need to be somewhere around about level with your knee when you sit on the thwart. The rollocks should be somewhere level with your knee. So uh, that's going to put them between those two with my knees being so far away from the bum. I did start wondering whether the, maybe that could have done with being further towards the middle than it is, but by the time you get stuff loaded in there it's going to balance out alright, I'm sure. So that's it for today. Um, next job, I think probably we're back to the old jet wash, take, it, take all the stuff out of it. Oh, I know, yes, there is something else as well, before I do that. Up there in the prow, there's a block where that piece of wood is clamping up there. There's a block of wood which was shaped and put in there, and it was completely rotten. And it's actually two, two lumps of wood together, but it's shaped to go into the prow, and fix the uh, in-wales too as an extra support for them so I've made up just a block at the moment when I can get into the into there to mark it up properly I've taken I've put some rough pencil lines on taking a um, uh, the marking gauge what do you call it uh, sliding bevel just as a rough outline and then I shall offer it in a place to get the final sort of bevels and then plane it and work it into fit it into the end there and then I shall make the marks just cut out for where the rails go and I think that'll probably be the next job fitting that and then after that we'll look at jet washing it which is another thing I've been promising for ages get it outside stripped out and wash it out and then I th probably go down the old merchant chandlers and get the uh, paint for the inside there is a, a one coat paint that you don't need any primer or anything for and it's a creamy color and um, they sell that in the uh, in the chandlers in Dover and I might even buy the undercoat and paint for the outside at the same time and then I've got it here or when I can get around to doing it. So, um, yeah, blocks for the prow, and then jet wash, and then paint. Then will be fit the rails. Then turn the boat over. Work on the underside. This the keel wood is rotten. So that's got to be replaced. I've got a piece of wood in the other workshop which I'm pretty sure will be big enough to do the job. And then scrape and sand, prime and uh, paint the underside, then turn it back over. Then there's the foredeck to make. And the floor. And probably about another 99 jobs that will come up in between will become apparent as I do the, do the work. But we're cracking on. Really, it's getting to the point where instead of taking things off or taking things out um, all the time, we're actually putting things on permanently. And that's getting exciting. So I'll probably end this one here. And then uh, 
part nine will follow from there. Yeah, I say thanks as always for your comments. Thanks for watching and your encouragement as well. And I'll see you all soon. Cheerio.